Hello my friends, I am so excited to be live today with Jason Naylor and I hope you are all having an amazing restful break if you're on break. So I know we'll kind of get people into the chat here but I'm super psyched to talk to him for today because I've been following Jason's work for a while as long as probably as well as many of you. So um, those of you that are joining us today feel free to give us a quick hey where are you joining us from as well as um, how you're doing, right? If um, those of you that don't know me, my name is Sarah Krajewski and I am I'm an elementary art teacher and I also um, do IG lives for the art of ed. So I'm really excited to talk to Jason today. Um, again, if you don't already follow his work, you're going to want to give him a follow for sure because he is amazing. He has so many things to share about being positive, being creative, and his work is immensely colorful. So give me like a whoop whoop for those of you that already follow Jason um, so that you can kind of follow along. Now, as soon as he joins us, I will be asking him just a couple questions um, about his work, his new book, as well as some other very exciting things. Um, so if you have any questions for him as we're chatting, feel free to pop it into the chat for us and then I will make sure to ask him or try my very best to make sure that, um, that I get those questions to Jason as well. So Again, hello to my friends from, oh, let's see, Pittsburgh, Australia. Hey, hey, it's probably like 9 a.m. the next morning there for you, right? Um, Texas, hello, all my friends. I'm super psyched that you are here. So I'm going to just quick check to make sure that Jason will be joining us in just a moment. All right. Are those of you that are in the chat right now, are y'all on break? Are you a lot of art edu educators? Like... Indiana, my peeps. All right, Jason's in here. Super psyched to have a quick chat with him. Here we go. Exciting. Drum roll. You guys, it's going to happen. Hey, Jason. Hey. How's it going? Fabulous. How are you? Good. Good. I'm super psyched to talk to you today. I love, obviously, that you're in, amongst your studio of color and amazingness. Where else would yeah, you be? <laughs> that's, yeah, here I am. That's how it works. Well, I said a lot of people probably already follow you because art educators love your work, and so do just people that love happiness and color. But can you tell <laughs> yeah. us about you, people that don't know you? Go ahead and just give us a little background about you. People who love happiness and color. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm Jason. I am an artist and a designer, and I'm based in Brooklyn. We're here in my studio. I like to do work that's driven by messages, and my messages are generally, they generally focus on things like love and kindness and positivity and motivation. Yes. And while I do some work that doesn't contain messages, even if you don't see a message in the actual visual, there usually is a message to it because I, I, uh, I love messaging. I love quotes and like aphorisms and anything positive. And that yeah. stuff really resonates with me. So I like to use it in my work. But I try to do work that is not necessarily derived from other people's quotes or other people's yeah. you know, writings or sayings or whatever. I try to generate my own stuff. So yeah. Um, also, I love color. I think that color is crucial to getting across positive messages. I think that without color, um, my world of visual arts would be very sad. So in order to achieve <laughs> the kind of happiness that I'm going for in my work, like the amount of positivity and, and to hit the message, you know, I think that color is very uh, imperative. So here we Completely. are. Completely. Well, I mean, you can obviously sense that from your work. It's just like it explodes color, it explodes positivity, and we feel that, right? I also love to like finding your passion of what you love to do and then creating work based around that. So if you love doing lettering, if you love doing, you know, using those bright colors, that's how you build your work. And that makes sense. So can yeah. you tell us like how, how you started to find your style? Like picture yourself maybe 10 years ago or whatever, like how do you feel like you really kind of fell into your style? Well, I think that for, I mean, this is pretty universal in my opinion. I think for anybody to find a style, it's, is sort of like an oxymoron. Like sure. I, I think find, let's say, let's call it stumble upon, you know, like I think I like you yeah. stumble upon a style. And the reason I say that is because if you're seeking to like create or develop a style, chances are whatever you're making is not 
from your gut or from your heart, or it's, it may not be quite as ownable to, to the real you. Um, so I, I think stumbling upon the style is, is the result of experimentation, you know, like just r repetition, like doing the same thing, maybe not drawing the same picture, but repeating your drawing practice daily mm -hmm. or as much as possible. And then you stumble upon a style. So I, does that make sense? Yeah, completely. I mean, it's the routine. It's like practice, right? Anytime you're practicing something, you kind of feel that like, all right, I, I'm kind of getting what is important to me. And I think, I mean, you're right. You you don't just, doesn't just like happen, right? But yeah. you over time are like, you know what? I kind of vibe with this thing. Like this is sort of my yeah. style, this is my jam. So yeah. that makes total sense. So speaking of style, I mean, you clearly have a style, but also you're now putting that style into different mediums, such as your book. Yeah. So can you tell us about your book? I'm super psyched about it. Tell us a little bit about the story, uh, the process, or kind of how it works. Yes. Here's like my book. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what the book is funny um, it's the the I'll try and summarize the story to keep it brief but um, the book is a result of one of my murals which says live life colorfully I should say it said live life colorfully it's no longer there mm -hmm. but I painted this mural several years ago and uh, a literary agent saw the mural and reached out to me and said uh, would you ever consider doing a book and I was like I mean Yes, because that's the, like that's the kind of person I am, you know, I'm like, right. I mean, Never uh, say no. have I ever considered that? No. Would I do it? Yes. Like, of course. <laughs> right. Yes. So, so then, you know, she's like, well, let's, you know, let's talk about it. And then, so that was in December of 2017 that I got the email from the agent. And it's taken from then until now for this book to come into existence, right. which goes to show you that it's a very like long term it's a very like drawn out project. You have a book too, right? I, I do. I mean, mine isn't as many pages as yours, right? Okay. But yes, <laughs> okay. it is It is a long process, right? And yeah. I actually started talking to my publisher like three years ago and then, you know what I mean? It is, it's a long, it's a long thing. Yeah. So first of all, tell us the name of your book because that's kind of like the whole basis for, because it's not like a story that we follow a character, right? It's more right. about affirmations and like your art through yeah. positive affirmations. Yeah, so I mean, the, the book is titled Live Life Colorfully, 99 Ideas to Add Positivity, Creativity, and Joy to Your Life. So the, the point of the book really is just to like generate a smile or a giggle or like maybe a thought of like, or like, you know, make you forget about your worries for a second. And the book is nonlinear. There's no story. There's no, there's no hero or character. It, the book is sort of like, um, it's like ideas that I have, uh, illustrations, like funny things that I have to say that are basically about life. And so I think it's, it's less about affirmations. It's more, it, it has a self-help sort of quality to it, mm -hmm. but it's more, it's more about like ideas that make you think a little bit. Yeah. And, um, so, and the book it's, you could open up and read one page and it would take you 30 seconds and you could totally put it down and then move on with your life. Or you could read it like cover to cover or about you know in any order and I, I like that it's sort of bite-sized you know each each page is its own little thing and the the bite-sized thing is, is so like you know we're so used to it because we're used to this like um immediate sort of nuggets of like tiktok video or whatever yeah. so it's my like, book kind of has that <laughs> yeah it has that vibe to it yeah, that, I mean, that's that's nice to play up that alley a little bit too, like short, quick to the point, it can be longer, but it can be short too. So I have to ask, did you, I mean, you obviously illustrated everything in the book and wrote the, the ideas yeah. and the text and everything. Um, yes. So you have complete ownership over it. Did you create all the art in the same way, like digitally or some original paintings? Like what's the process for how you created the, the art itself? So that's a really good question there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't paint anything. There are no murals or anything like that. It's all illustrated. I did it all digitally on my iPad using Procreate. Yep. And the style is a little bit different than the stuff that, that you see on my murals and even on my Instagram. It, it, I think it's a little bit more illustrated than I normally like to do. And it's less <laughs> about lettering. My, okay. I, I think since the messages are kind of written into the, you know, there's like a caption for each page. Since the messaging is all written that way, I I decided to illustrate more than do lettering because I think that there were like funny things that I wanted to illustrate. 
Uh, I'll give you an example. There's one of my favorite pages that's called dry erase graffiti. And the idea is that you take a dry erase marker and you can, you can write on tons of things with a dry erase marker. And I yeah. made a list, you know, and it's like, you can write on windows, plates, glasses, uh, <laughs> like anything porcelain or whatever, including your toilet. And so then the idea was use your dry erase marker to like tag up your home. Obviously you can wipe it off cause it's dry erase, yeah. but like tag it up with things that fit your, your brand, you know? And That's for me, it's so like, funny. I want to put positive messages on everything. So it's like, <laughs> the goal is like, write as many positive things on your toilet. It, even if it's like, have a good day, you write that on top of your toilet. You can totally wipe it off later. You know? Yes, I love it. That is literally genius. Yeah. And now I'm going to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So you get dry erase markers. And so then obviously that page in my book, rather than like lettering out messages, I drew a right. picture of a toilet, you know, because it's like I illustrated this toilet with graffiti all over it. Because that's the point I'm trying to make, you know, like, don't my message doesn't matter here. It's your message and it's your toilet. So like, go have fun. <laughs> it's your, this is your quote from our chat. It's your message. It's your toilet. And people totally. will be like, what are you talking about? I have to hear more. <laughs> I must watch this conversation. But yeah, I love I that. I need the book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, though, like I when I saw you had a book coming out, so exciting. I think it's perfect for kids and, and adults. Anybody that's just like, I need to just be psyched and happy and feel that color just come into your soul. And, and we feel that from your work for sure. So I guess chatting more about um, specifically like working with other artists and collaborations. I mean, even if you just look at your website for 10 seconds, you'll notice how many collabs you've done and how many clients you've worked with and for. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's like or kind of like some of your favorite experiences with the types of clients that you've worked with? Yeah, so um, if you, I guess I should say, um, if you don't know this about me, I, I started out my career as a graphic designer and I worked in-house for Mac Cosmetics for six years as a full-time designer, art director, you know, whatever creative people do in-house. And, <laughs> <laughs> which we could spend Fine. another half hour talking about. We'll talk about that next time. <laughs> right. Um, so I wasn't happy doing that. So I quit my job and became a full-time artist and here we are. But um, because of working as a designer in the design industry in New York City, I have a network and I, ha I quit that job with a network of, of, of people and companies and brands that I, had even done design work for or had collaborated with as or, or in that capacity working for Mac. Right. So I think that the reason to say all that is that has sort of um, lent to me doing a lot of collaborative brand work. A lot of my clients are commercial and um, I, I think that I, I thrive working with commercial clients. I do well with the parameters and the objectives that come from marketing departments and with design briefs and all that kind of stuff, because yeah. that's how I started my career. So, um, I, you know, I, I love doing commercial work and I'm, and I'm so thankful to have a lot of commercial clients, but I also am really appreciative of the variety that I have in my career because I'm able to, like a lot of the murals that I paint, you know, some of them are for clients, but, but a lot of them are for myself. I go paint right. things that I want to put out on the street and then, yeah the stuff that I put on the street often generates uh, interest with my clients and, or new brands or new, you know, new clients or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and so it often results in clients saying, we want to do something like X mural, or we want to do something like this Instagram post. And so to answer your question, working with brands and doing commercial work has been great for me because I'm usually able to do the kind of work that I, that I want to be doing anyway. You know, I think it's, yeah. it's really, um, I'm really lucky and fortunate. And so <laughs> right. <knock on> <laughs> I, I'm able, I'm able to like have clients say like, Hey, we love this mural that you did that says believe or whatever. And we want one. And then I'm yeah. like, cool. Well, I, I did that for me and I did it exactly the way I wanted to do it. And so now someone wants to hire me to do something similar. I'll change it up a little bit, but yeah. I, I kind of get to do what I want to do. And so I, I love, so, uh, you know, it's great. I love working with, with brands and stuff for that reason. Yeah, I mean, that, that feels like the best, the best way to be an artist that works with clients and can collaborate with people is to say, all right, I'm still doing me, I'm still being me, but you're doing it through the lens of like, okay, helping a business or helping kind of get your, get people to see your work. So that is, you're right, that's a very um, 
something you're very lucky to be able to do. Do you have an experience yeah. with a particular client that you're like super dope? I loved making like X, Y, Z or something you're just like super proud of? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I should call out Sephora um, because Sephora, I had, I had done some work. I had like moonlighted for Sephora while I was a designer working for Mac and I was doing like some design work sort of behind the scenes. I don't think I was even supposed to be doing this, but I did it for <laughs> Sephora, you know, a hundred years ago. And so then a couple of years ago when Sephora approached me to do this uh, campaign and the campaign was called, we belong to something beautiful. Uh, and it was all about in, uh, in, inclusion and diversity and, and all the things that are like right in line with my, like my brand, you know? Yeah. So they, they wanted me to do this, this campaign work. And it was great because, I had a lot of like a really good amount of creative liberty, especially for a, for a company that big. Mm -hmm. And then the final piece, one of the final pieces is an animation that lives permanently now in Times Square. So oh, awesome. the, the big, yeah. So the biggest <laughs> part of the biggest part of this is I, now I have a billboard in Times Square, which is like the most massive right. thing <laughs> in my career. You know, like the, the day that it went live and I went to Times Square and I saw the, thing playing and I like I was almost in tears like this yeah. is like I've made it I've landed like I can die now you know <laughs> I mean don't but yes <laughs> that's how it felt you know it was like yeah. the biggest thing that like bigger than I could have ever dreamed of especially knowing that like I, years ago had like moonlighted doing some stupid little like logo designs for the for this brand <laughs> that I thought was so cool then you know yeah so yeah, yeah. that was a pretty big thing um, yeah that's amazing i mean to come full circle to and like to be doing something for a company but all of a sudden you're like no this is like the biggest way or one of the biggest ways you could think of that your art could be seen and viewed and loved by people yeah totally that's so cool yeah i love it so i i mean i think that's that's one of my favorites for for many reasons and like Times square is amazing of course but Right. Also, what I love about it is that it's work that I feel so proud of. You know, if it was Absolutely. work for Chase Bank and it was a huge bummer or something and it was yeah. in Times Square, it would right. it, we wouldn't have the same conversation. Exactly. So you're doubly proud because it's something you believe in and you love, totally. but also it's like a massive accomplishment. It's like totally. stacked, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I was going to ask too, because we have, I mean, the art of education our goal is to serve art teachers with content and writing and conferences and things that help specifically art teachers. So there are a lot of art educators watching. And I know that, you know, we love inspiring our students, but we're curious, what kind of art experience did you have as a kid? Like when you were in, in school, did you have art? Did you connect with an art teacher? Like, what was that like for you? I mean, I, I always did well with art. My mom is an artist and she paints portraits and like people and she's great. And I, I, I owe it to her, you know, my, I feel like I get my talent from her. Um, I always had colored pencils and crayons and paper. Like I didn't, I wasn't playing basketball. I was drawing pictures like for, yeah. all the way back, you know? So um, I did well in art classes. I, I, I think I don't, I don't remember ever not being in art class all the way through high school and like into, into college where I studied graphic design. Um, there was one teacher that I had in college. Maybe that's less applicable. Um, well, <laughs> we still want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, okay. So there's a teacher that I had a professor in college named um, Maya Chachava and she prompted us to, create this like massive page of doodles. This is an exercise that I remember and it's totally like great exercise regardless yeah. of whether you're in college or not. So the, the exercise is to take a big, huge piece of paper, do as many doodles and like use your, um, as many tools as you can and like fill the page with exploration. And then you take like a two inch by two inch, cut a two inch by two inch hole in a piece of paper and like find a spot on that page of doodles that you like in that little two inch crop Yep. And then take that design and blow that up to like the same size, but just yeah. a little, just a bit that's in the two inch square, right? That yeah. exercise kind of blew my mind um, because I, I mean, I, obviously it's a great exercise, but I, I think I discovered something about like blowing things up that really clicked with me. Ooh, yeah. Um, so let me just, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Great exercise, great teacher and like totally do it 
um, with your kids. Yes, yes. Then <laughs> another, let me, let me just say one more. Um, another exercise that I remember, which was really cool, um, was with Mrs. Brown in eighth grade. I can't believe that I remember that name. Um, and <laughs> this was <laughs> totally, um, we made, so it was like a group, I think it was a group project and we, we did the grid method to make a mural and each person, we, you know, put the grid on the, on the design and each person painted their, you know, whatever size square and we pieced it all together. And I, and I was really into comic books, surprise, surprise. And me and my buddies in art class, we created this mural of Spawn. And if you don't know what that is, Spawn is a char uh, uh, image comics character. So let's, mm -hmm. you know, it's like Superman or somebody, whatever. This yeah. guy's name was Spawn. We created this, I think it was probably like eight squares by eight squares. So maybe it was like an eight foot by eight foot mural, which mm -hmm. to a kid is huge, you know? You're like two feet tall, so of course. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So we made this mural, like each of us doing the square. And I, and I remember that I somehow ended up being able to keep it. And I kept it for, for a long time. I don't know where it is now, but it would be amazing if I had it. Maybe yes. my mom has it. Um, anyway, that was a cool project. And I, obviously at the time I had no idea what my future would look like, but it's interesting to think about the first experience learning how to actually make a mural you know, in eighth grade, and here I am doing it. Uh, of course, yeah. I never use that method. Well, you know, but, you, but your <laughs> excitement for creating on a large scale was born totally. yes. during yeah, that. Yeah. I love it. I, love yeah. it. I mean, I see a couple of art teachers in the chat who just like to try like that doodle project with kids. I mean, yeah. kids love just like having very few limitations and just creating, but then to mm -hmm. take what they make and turn it into something a little bit more complex, they're like, okay, now we're going to intentionally find a spot. Feels like something that they would completely gravitate towards. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll be, we'll be sharing that with them for sure. So I guess cool. that sounds like a memorable project. Um, are there any other like specific childhood art experiences or like anything you remember as a kid that you were just like this, this changed me who I am as, a, as an artist? Because I guess to back it up a little bit, um, I have a few art educators in the chat that are just saying like those positive experiences and the negative experiences that we have with teachers or with parents or with family members completely impact who we are as artists, right? And as people. So what do you feel like shaped you most as a young kiddo growing up in the art world? Wow. Um, what shaped me as an artist? I mean, you know, I don't, I don't have a memory of like a negative experience as an artist. And I don't mean this to sound like cocky or anything, but I always oh, did good. like, I always did really well in art classes. I was always top of the class yeah. and, and I have nothing but like good memories of, of my art education. I, I think, but to answer your question, I think there's so much more that goes into defining who you are as an artist. And I would yes. say that let's step away from art class for a minute and, and, and talk about, like some of the things in my life and in the, in the environment that I grew up in and like my school and my, like I grew up as a Mormon in a, you know, Mormons are very, it's a very strict religion. Like I, and I, I no longer practice that, but I would say like there are, there are maybe even like lessons from Sunday school yeah. that impact who I am as an artist today. You know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe when I was a kid, like learning, singing these songs in the primary and Sunday school or whatever, like that kind of, I think those things have a, an even bigger impact on me as a human and me as an artist than I even completely. realize, you know? Oh, completely. I mean, yeah, you're right. Broaden it, like talk about those experiences and that's what makes you the artist that you are. That's what makes us the people that we are is what happens around us, right? Our environment. So yes. I think that's, that's also, I guess that's also kind of our goal as people is to try to have a positive impact on someone or to try to like as much as you can steer and choose that positive path, um, yeah. which I guess, I mean, so I'm thinking back to like, I have, you know, a motivation board in my classroom where I have a bunch of inspirational quotes and I try to read a quote to my students each week. And oftentimes they are ones created by you because they're so colorful and they're beautiful and the kids just love them. So do you feel like there's anything about, just about like mental health or keeping that positive lifestyle or making those positive choices that you can sort of give us a couple tidbits about how you feel like you manage that as an artist, like always trying to stay positive. 
Yeah, totally. I, I think positivity is a result um, of, let's call them like wins that happen throughout the day. Mm. And yeah. positivity, you know, you can choose positivity and that's easy to say and everything, but it, that's actually really hard to just choose positivity when you don't have a lot of substance behind it. So right. I think that like these daily wins that I'm going to call them, uh, for example, let's, let me define the daily wins a little bit. I, I think like you set your alarm for, for, 8 a.m. right or maybe that's yeah. way too late for some of you 6 a.m. you set your alarm <laughs> for 6 a.m. if you get up at 6 a.m. don't snooze get up at 6 a.m. when the alarm goes off that's a win because you you set out to do something you told yourself you would do it and you did it so that little win right there gives you confidence because you successfully did something like you have a you have a success under your belt and then when you achieve that gives you the, that confidence and that enables you to like put that po that positive energy that comes from the the win from the success from the confidence that enables you to, to apply it so it's not choosing it it's like applying it right yeah, and the yeah, more yeah. you the more you have these wins throughout the day and they can be anything like say that you're gonna um, finish this project you're not gonna have lunch until you finish this project right it doesn't matter what time it is you're gonna set like these little daily goals for yourself and yep. you achieve those things and then that fuels your confidence and that in turn fuels your positivity and so I, I think that. For me, I am a very like structured, routine oriented kind of person. And, I, mm -hmm. and I, I like to have these like little routines that I set up for myself. And they're not the same every day. It's not about me. Like I wake up every day at seven and at eight, I eat four protein bars or like, it's not like that. It's like each yeah. day I, I craft like a, a little like, like set of goals or set of things that I, that I want to do or say or accomplish or check off a list in order to feel good as a human being. And some of them are work related. Some of them are art related. Some of them are like fitness. Some of them are like, I'm not going to eat potato chips today. I'm not going on a diet just today. I'm not going to eat any snacks. Like, right. you know, <laughs> yes, or whatever, right? it, it, can, it, can, it, can, it can be whatever. The point is, is, is like, you got to have your own integrity. You got to do what you tell yourself that you're going to do. And you will stack up wins on your own behalf. And you will, the result will be, you will feel confident. You will feel yeah. positive. You know, you'll feel good about yourself. And when you feel good about yourself, you do better art. I mean, you're, you're preaching it. I love it, Jason. I mean, honestly, what I'm hearing when I hear you talk is like choice and control. You're not like, oh, happy stuff will happen to me. Like things that I'm going to just be happy. You know, it's like you're, you're filling that bucket and you're feeding yourself with all of the choices that you do to continue remaining as positive as possible. And it just like makes makes you glow it's perfect um i think that is a great description of it and hopefully some hints for people too before i forget i'm going to read this quick question in here um it says what would be the ideal way to survive in this materialistic world as a minor artist without giving up my dreams and passion so maybe just a kind of a um, contradiction from uh practicing material creation versus maybe something a little bit more complex um, or maybe exploring an idea that might be more in line with that dreams and passion. Do I'm going to read it again. You got it. Yeah, yeah, read it again. Okay. What would be the ideal way to survive in this materialistic world as a minor artist without giving up dreams and passion? Well, what does that mean as a minor artist? Well, let's maybe ask and see if Hang Lee's will give us a little, uh, a little definition. Give us a little more info about that one, maybe. As far as like kind of balancing, it sounds like what you want to do and what you maybe feel like you need to do to make money, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's a tough question. Okay, what, yeah. what, what, how would, what would we recommend to survive the material world as a minor artist? <laughs> well, the material world, I mean, I, I think that like, let's talk about the material world for a second. Like, is that right. a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I mean, it's a thing that we cannot escape. So should we embrace the material world and be doing work that, that talks about it, that, that references it, that maybe mm -hmm. addresses it, you know? And yeah. that, I think that maybe that is more of a conversation about passion. Like what kind of work do you want to be doing? Where does your passion live? Is your passion... Right with the material world is your passion with commercial art is your passion against it yeah you know and then 
I guess the answer to the question is like, how do you find balance? I think the question is, how do you find balance, right? Exactly. I think that and, that's what it feels like. And actually, we just got another question that says like, how do you balance client work versus personal work? So I think we're maybe thinking like an aspiring, some people are saying maybe like an aspiring artist, so perhaps a younger artist, but trying to think about that balance between something you want to do and something you feel like you have to do in order to make money is how I'm interpreting that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that that's the age old dilemma, you know, of <laughs> yeah. like, uh, you know, if you, it's like you work a full time job and you want to be a full time artist, but, you, but you, so you're going to go home at night and like do freelance art projects. But the truth is you're so burnt by the time you right. get home from your corporate job that you actually can't do it. Like that's a, that's a dilemma that a lot of people face. Um, yeah. So I, I would suggest, first of all, like, I think there if you're doing one thing and you want to be doing another, like if you're doing the corporate job and you want to be working more as an artist, you are going to have to do more hours in a week than maybe you want to do. And yeah. that I think is paying your dues. And so if you, if you have this dream of maybe doing more art or doing more part-time art, you are going to have to come to terms with the fact that you're going to put in more hours than other people. And yeah. that I think is a question of your passion. Like how much is it worth it? How much is it worth skipping dinner with your friends so you can work on your side hustle? Yeah. And if you're passionate about it, you'll feel rewards from doing it and, I, and you'll keep doing it. So I think- Yeah, you're right. I mean, if you're, it, it's as simple as that. It, well, it's not as simple as that, but it sounds like it is. It's like, if you're enjoying yourself, if you're wanting to create, if you're coming home and you're like, you know what, I'm super, I'm super exhausted or whatever, but I have an idea and I need to get it out, then you'll make time for that. You'll, you'll have to make it work because it's important to you. And, um, I mean, that leads me a little bit to my next question too. And like I said, um, I have one or two more questions for you, but anyone else that's here watching right now, if you want to add a question for Jason in the chat, feel free to drop it in now. Um, but I also wanted to ask how you feel about like art as therapy. Do you feel like when you're creating, you kind of get in the zone and it's therapeutic or do you feel like, can you explain your actual process of when you make something, what you feel? Well, yeah, totally. And you actually brought you, I forgot to touch on this earlier, but uh, the mental health component is really big for me. And it's partly because of my own personal experiences. It's partly because of um, family members. And I think mental health plays a bigger role in, in creation than we recognize sometimes. Yes. But for me, it depends on what I'm doing. And, and half of my work is done digitally and the other half is done with a spray can. And so let's talk about when I have a spray can in my hand because I believe that for anyone, I, I believe that pretty universally, if you use your hands to do something and make something that you will, you'll have a different kind of reward than if you're doing something like digitally. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, even like if you're just washing dishes, like if you, if you're having a rough day or something like go wash dishes, like you'll feel better. And it's, <laughs> it's almost like, because you're using your hands to do something, yeah. you forget about like whatever is so whatever. Yes. So I think that as that applies to art, like, and me, when I'm painting with a spray can in my hands, I go to a completely different place. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think it's super cathartic. It's therapeutic for me. I, I forget about my troubles, you know, or whatever, because I'm like busy using my hands and there's like a muscle memory sort of thing happening. I'm like waving my hands around. Uh, I'm <laughs> spraying on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's so that that's like a very um, like therapeutic thing for me to do. And I, I don't do it so that I so that I have that result. I'm just aware that it does that for me. Yeah. Um, I think when I'm working digitally, I that doesn't achieve the same results. Okay. You know, it's still creation, I can still be doodling or sketching or inventing or whatever. But because I'm not actually physically using my hands, I don't get that same sort of catharsis. Right. So and, and I believe that it, that rule applies to anybody. So like, if you're the kind of person that that creates on a computer, just try to go create the exact same thing but yeah. with ma manual, like, you know, paint, I mean, whatever. Honestly, for me, it's like the undo button. Cause when I'm on like my iPad, I'm like, I can just change this. But when you're drawing in actuality as a physical piece of art, you can't, it's, you have to be more, I feel like you have to be more intentional, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, when you're creating, you're being a little bit more in the zone maybe because you're mindfully creating, knowing that it will be, it's gonna take you more time to undo that than it would mm -hmm. if you were just kind of scribbling on the iPad. Maybe that's mm -hmm. part of it too, right? Is that meditation? I, 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 yeah, you it's know. the meditative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, the, and the finished piece. Like if you actually paint something and you're holding it in your hands, you have this yeah. tactile finished thing. 
the sense of reward that comes from that is very different than tapping on a thing and having it fill in with color, which is magical and we of love course. it. Yes, but it's, it's a different reward, you know. Yes, yeah. You you probably couldn't have created your book maybe as quickly as you did had you not had the ability to draw in that way, right? So of yeah, course right. it's magical and beautiful and wonderful. But yes, right. it's like, would you rather read a book or a, you know a, a, an electronic book, right? right what do you right. what gives you that sense of like you're actually holding it or you actually created something, right? Um, yeah. I think that's a great way to describe it too. Yeah. So. Um, Speaking of mental health a little bit, I know, I mean, we're like days away from the end of 2020. And though I know that like, you know, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, there's not really that much that changes, right? You know, it's like, or, or it shouldn't, right? Because it's the, it's the same, we're just doing days, we're just counting days. But there's mm -hmm. something about thinking about the, a fresh start of a new year that I think gives people hope, gives you kind of like some time to reflect, time to sort of start over a little bit. So what are you either looking forward to or what do you think is um, kind of a way to like reflect on how you're going to move forward as an artist, as a person and, and celebrate how far we've come? You know, people are looking for hope. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm all, uh, yeah, totally. No, I'm all about hope. I mean, uh, hope is a huge thing. and. I think the fresh start idea is is great. Like New Year's is a great time for a lot of reasons. What I'm gonna do this year, um, I I feel like 2020 got lost a little bit. So this week I've been thinking about this a little bit. What I what I plan to do for my New Year is I, I want to go back to one year ago and reevaluate everything that I that that I decided was like an objective or a goal for mine for me for my for 2020 yeah. because i feel like we're in this weird like t twilight zone where 2020 began and i i had an amazing 2019 and i was like ready on fire to like hit the ground running even faster on, you know 2020 january yes. 1 like i had all these things <laughs> planned you know and they all just went to shit and sorry they, <laughs> okay <laughs> like so um I, so I, what I want to do is go back and revisit like what what was I what was I flying high on one year ago like what got lost in this madness because March yeah. 1st like the world just like stopped right and it hasn't really like not much has happened in my list of to do, like in my to do yeah. list yeah. since March 1st you know I other things happened I had a ton of amazing opportunities because of the pandemic and like, sure. uh, you know, I'm not, I don't have any regrets or like, I don't look back and think like, I wish things would have been different. Like I am happy that everything is happening the way it has. And yes. in order to, I think in order to continue to feel good about the way everything is, I need to revisit where was I last year? So yeah. I'm rather than like fresh start, like I don't think it's a fresh start. I think it's a continuation. Yeah. I think it's like, where, where was I a year ago? What did I leave behind? What did I forget about? Cause let's, now we're in a place where I can revisit those things. I can pick them back up and I can continue to move forward. Completely, completely. I think that is obviously a very healthy way to reflect, right? Because, um, I mean, personally, I feel like somebody that's like, oh, let's get rid of 2020. It's like, things still happen. You know, we're all still here or, you know, we're, we're still kind of in the conversation. So how can we move forward in a way that makes us feel like we're, really being as strong as possible, but also kind of reflecting on what happened in the past too. Now I have to ask a weird question. You said like, think back to where you were in 2019. Do you like keep track of your goals like in list form or do you like just think back and picture yourself in 2019? Like sometimes it's hard to reflect when you have to remember everything, <laughs> but like yeah. what does that look like for you, right? Yeah, that's a great like? question. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't have like sketchbooks of like perfect lists and stuff like that. I, I yeah. do have, uh, in my notes app on my phone, I have ideas. Like yeah. my lists are generally in idea format and, um, I have like mood board kind of like sketchy mood board stuff on my iPad that relates to the ideas. Okay. Um, so, and I, I, like, I do occasionally make a list as it relates to an idea, but I think the reason why I feel like I need to go back and revisit is because I don't have that list. If I had a list of like number one, number two, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it would be easier just to be like, well, I'm still working on three and three through seven, <laughs> yeah. you know? Right. But instead right. I feel a little bit like, I, like what I remember more about one year ago is how I felt. I remember okay. less about all the things that I was going to do because of the way I felt, but I know mm -hmm. there was some good stuff in there. I know in my list of ideas, like I know in my, 
sketchy like mood board stuff that I have on my iPad. I know there's some stuff in there that I, when I go back through it, I'm going to swipe back to my iPad. And I'm going to be like, yes, I never did that. Yeah. And then I'm okay, going to be yeah. able to like reinvigorate it and, you know, and, and, and pull it into the current workload. Yeah, that's exciting. And that's just kind of going with your theme, which, which is like continuation, right? There's never like an automatic start or an automatic end to something, but you're just continuing to learn, continuing to grow. And I think that's really inspirational too. I hope people kind of pick up on how important that is, right? It's not magic. Yeah. It's not like a snap. It's, yeah. it's more complicated than that. <laughs> totally. But yeah. I, I think it's good to like do a New Year's resolution also, because that goes back to like the little daily wins, you know, don't yes. do a whole year of I'm going to do something, do one day, you know, yeah. like mental health style one day at a time. So think of like something that you're going to do or you're not going to do on New Year's Day. That's it. Yeah. Like Ooh, yeah. limit it, limit it to something that you can accomplish with a bang, you know, like oh, I'm not really? going to eat ice cream all day on New Year's Day. 100%. <laughs> I'm going to nail love it. that. But what can you eat, Jason? What are you going to let <laughs> Well, I mean, you've got to plan it for yourself, you know, like, well, I, that's true. you know, know you're right. if you're going to go out with a bang and you're going to eat ice cream all day, New Year's Eve, then at least tell yourself you're not going to wake up and like eat hangover ice cream, you know, like, right, <laughs> right, right, right. You're going to plan, you're going to make yourself be as strong as you want. I love it. Totally. I, love it. I mean, I'm, I'm just giving you analogies, but like, yes. you know, set yourself yes. up to win so that you can get that win on your belt. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Starting off strong and then just continuing from there. I love it. Um, yeah. I also saw I was kind of watching the... Um, uh, I can't, I lost my word, but like watching the, oh, the progress of your hotel room that you helped to design. That's a super exciting new project that you were able to work on. Do you want to just tell people that aren't aware of what that was, what, what it's all about? Yeah, totally. So, I mean, that it's such an awesome project and I feel lucky that I was able to do it. It's a, it's a hotel suite and it's a partnership between a uh, concierge service and the hotel and myself, the hotel gave up the suite and allowed me to gut it and do whatever I want. And so the room, is, it's a one bedroom suite, has, uh, has a terrace and a kitchen. And I completely gutted it, painted all the walls, brought in furniture, like painted some of the furniture, like carpet, everything. So when you walk into the hotel room, it's a complete like Jason Naylor experience, like an Instagrammable kind of like yes. experience. <laughs> And it's, and it, but it's beyond just like me painting on the walls. It's like, I picked out pillows to go on the beds and like, it's this whole like 360 kind of world that I, that I was able to create. And the point of it is, I mean, apart from like the marketing point of it, which is to like bring people into the hotel, right, the, right. the point of it, the creative point of it is to, it's called the dream room. And it's to sort of create this oasis that's away from like the troubles of like the streets in like of new york you know i i don't want to say the streets because it sounds like it's like the streets of new york what what i'm trying to say is like it's supposed to be like this sort of like utopia that takes you away from your existing life whether that's amazing or difficult or challenging or whatever it is it's a breath Mm -hmm. of fresh air from that and that's the that was my goal so the so when you when you walk into the hotel the hotel is nice and boutique and cute and everything when you walk into the dream room it's like 180 degrees and it's filled with like neon signs and like lights and it has this dreamy quality and like, I'm so proud of it. It's, you should be, it's so dope. It's really amazing. And I love to like, again, it's not just like your murals on the walls, but it's like every little piece is like, oh yeah, Jason would have that in his house. Or like you get this mm-hmm. vibe where it, it all just fits together. Right. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the experience, which I think is more, um, you know, sometimes art is a flat piece that we experience and we love. And sometimes art is like an immersive um, yeah. experience. And that feels like something that um, that, that you can describe in that way. <laughs> totally. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think in, when, it, when the art is an experience like that, you leave less to the imagination. You know, mm-hmm. I think a, a two dimensional painting on a wall has has more power to like provoke imagination and, and you can see it and like go to go to your own world. But this is sort of like I built the world for you. Like you yeah, gotta yeah. you gotta you gotta live it my way. You know, <laughs> a little bit, right. you know? Yeah. For <laughs> a little sure. bit more than if it's just a painting. Yeah, of course. But that's that's why it's great is because you're telling your story and you want us to be yeah. part of your yeah. immersive experience. I love it. Yeah, exactly. You're getting a bunch of beautiful comments, Jason. People are so psyched to be here chatting with you because we love your work. It, it is it is just awe-inspiring. So thank you for being able to chat with us today. Now, I'm going to do a couple other things really quick, because I want you to make sure you plug your book and um, tell us where we can follow you and all that fun stuff if people are not aware or what your upcoming projects are. But um, I'm going to ask everybody to just 
turn on your like imagination hat for a second because um, I run the IG live chats every Monday and I'm okay. going to be continuing them. And I'm going to just do like a little quick, I love giveaways, right? People love free stuff. So I'm going to just pre like pretend that this Art of Ed sticker is like holographic because I don't have the holographic ones yet, but just pretend, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to ask. We all have an imagination. Just, just pretend it's like rainbow and amazing, right? Yeah. So I'm going to ask um, everybody in the chat a question and the first person to answer will get a sticker mailed to them and I'll message them through the Art of Ed. So here is the question, okay? How many ideas are in Jason Naylor's new book? First to answer. First to answer. How many ideas are in Jason Naylor's new book? <sighs> you guys, come on. I know you want a sticker. Jason, can you hold up the book for him? <laughs> Oh, yay! There it is. Okay. There it is. Just kidding. Okay, we got is 99. Yay! Look how beautiful it is. 99. Okay, I'm going to write down your handle real quick. D-O-D-I-D-O-O-D-L-E-S. Okay, I'm going to message you, my friend. Um, Jason, thank you so, so much for meeting with us. Sorry. There we go. Um, can you tell us where we can pre... I think your book is still up for pre-order, correct? The book is up for pre-order. It will be available on January 21st, but pre-orders are great and they, the pre-orders help to get um, sales once the book launches. So if you want the book, totally pre-order it. And then you can go to livelifecolorfully.com, which is where you can pre-order it. And also I made a bunch of free stuff that you can get if you pre-order, which is like Instagram stories, templates, coloring pages, um, some sticker instagram sticker stuff i can't remember a bunch of stuff and Perfect. you get it for free if you pre-order so live life .com. yes you can find me at at jason naylor which is j-a-s-o-n-n-a-y-l-o-r or you could go to my website which is jason naylor dot nyc perfect I, I mean, again, people who are not already following Jason, what y'all doing? He's just going to like color your feed with positivity. It is so, so good. And I'm so glad we got to chat today, Jason. You are simply amazing. So have an amazing time creating your next endeavor and continue to live life colorfully. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. It was so of great course. speaking to you. Absolutely, Jason. All right, everybody. We'll see you later. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.